want to once again welcome you uh, back to the Link uh, Baptist Church on our Tuesday evening Bible study. We thank uh, God for your presence, and certainly we, our hands go out to those who will be listening to us over the airwaves. Uh, we just um, can't thank God enough for what he's doing in the midst of our lives today. Uh, so at this time, I would ask that you would just bow your heads that we might have a word of prayer. Gracious God, eternal, Lord, we can't thank you enough for your presence in this world today. Thank you, Lord, for your grace that started us on this day. Thank you, Lord, that you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the fact that you have been with us throughout the days of our life. And all of our blessings come from you. Amen. Now, Lord, we ask that you would look on us. Forgive us of our sins. We pray that you will create a clean heart, clean mind, and a revigorating spirit within us. Lord, we want to do your will in every area of our lives. And as we look at the world that we live in today, Lord, there's so much of a need for us to represent you. Help us strengthen us in our weakness. Help us to speak boldly with authority and with courage. Teach us as only you can do. Guide and direct our study that all things said and done be to your glory and to your honor, and be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. 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 Pastor, you want to go ahead? And uh, well, <clears throat> just to put us on spot, we are, we are uh, for those who may not have been here on last week, we're starting with this lesson 24 journey into knowing Jesus. And the title of Lesson 24 says, What the Resurrection Proves. And so our text is coming from the Gospel of St. John, the 20th chapter. And uh, we're going, we have a focus on the first 10 verses of that chapter. That's what we're going to be looking at this evening, uh, for which me and Pastor will be um, imparting and discussing to you. So I just pray that you will be attentive uh, to the study on tonight. And I just uh, I want to add another thing. It says, we all have dark Fridays when our whole world seems to be falling apart. And it gives us some descriptions. Loved ones die in the marriage is in trouble. Finance is a nightmare. Child becomes a prodigal. A terrible sin has been committed. On your heartbreaking Fridays, remember, Sunday is coming. And the resurrection proved three things. So I, I said that to say that there's something significant and powerful in the resurrection. And we must receive it as it is. It can be the difference between day and night in our lives. And certainly a, there's a whole lot of people that's living in darkness. And they need to know that the light is available. Amen? Okay, Pastor, you. Yeah, I must say, I'd like to read. First of all, thank you. I like to read uh, John chapter twenty, verse one through ten. I want you guys to, to, to in your hearts and your mind go with me, travel with me somewhere. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early. That's Jesus's tomb, and it's Sunday morning. While it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb, then she ran and came to Simon Peter. And to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and she said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple, and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloth lying there, yet he did not go in. 
Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. And he saw the clothes, he saw the linen clothes lying there. And the handkerchief that had been around his head, now lying with the linen clothes. But folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away, went away again to their own homes. All right, here's what you catch uh, that, that I found out doctrine why and especially to my five I want you to I mean I want the church but but especially them because in order to teach on the next level minister AG mm -hmm. they got to be taught and here's a, a worldly concept and an educational and an intellectual but a biblical concept a spiritual concept the world calls your teaching people micromanagement this is your micromanagement. No, you don't know what you're doing. And I know that spiritually you don't know what you're doing. I know you don't know what you're doing. I mean, you, you barely know God's plan of salvation. And then you want to say the, the first accusation is you're micromanaging. Now, what I'm checking is what Jesus did. It's called actionable feedback. Now, actionable feedback. If you knew what you were doing prior to this, you will need to be micromanaged. But people in the world who don't accept responsibility and accountability, that's what they call it, micromanagement. Now, people love you enough to not let you make a fool out of yourself because some of the folk are really good at doing it. Now, apply it to the lesson. They, put G, they, they killed him on the cross. They, he died for our sins on the cross. He's in a borrowed tomb. They got a big wheel-like stone that they rolled in front of his tomb and it's hewn, H-E-W-N, out of a rock. And it weighs tons. And from that, they got cement on it, and they got tons. I mean, just it's, it's humongous what's going on. All right. To top that off, there are how many guards out here? Two guards. No, it's more than two, right? Turn, right. turn to Matthew 28. Let me show you something. Because I, I really want them to get their doctrine together. Because I see so many older Christians who are just as nasty and mean as they want to be. And they don't know how to manage, let alone micromanage. Because they had a hard time with it. But see, when you got actionable feedback, I want them to know what the action and the feedback is. Everybody, feedback is the food, the breakfast of champions. All right, Matthew 28, verse 4 and verse 11. Mm. Okay. Read that for me, please, sir. Um, verse 4 yes, through sir. 11. Yeah, 4 and 11. Oh, 4, okay. And the guards shook for fear of him. How many? The guards All right, go ahead. shook for fear of him and became like dead men. Right. And you say 11? Yes, sir. Now, while they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all the things that had happened. All right, so it was, it, was, it, it went from uh, what sounds like maybe two to some. Mm -hmm. So there's a tomb, empty tomb, there's a tomb here. There are some guards here. So it's got this big rock hewn up in here that it's impossible to move, and it's kind of cemented in the ground. And the cement has these big chains that go up because people were robbing graves that went in there to, to, to hold the cement in the rock in place. Next to impossible to get into. From that point, there's a Roman seal that you dare not touch at any time. Now, they just put him in there, right? So when they go there, Ron, mm -hmm. they're talking about, here, here's the problem with the Christian church. They don't understand the empty tomb. And because the disciples didn't understand it, to John chapter 20, verse 9. 9 and 10. Let me read that for you. 
verse 9, for yet they did not know the scripture. They know what he told them, but they didn't understand it. And it's clear on what I see. I see a lot of people who want to be leaders in church who don't they understand from a worldly perspective how to lead, but they don't know from a biblical perspective how to lead. All right. And then they think, I don't see it, and they'll call me micromanagement. But now I need actual feedback because i got a church to run. Jesus has some people here now, and it's, it's not only three. Mary made a, ma a major discovery. He's not in there. She goes and tells Peter, because Peter kind of sent me the leader still. You hear me? Peter and John go and talk to him. So after they do that, now they're going to come to a place where they're going to come. Peter, John outruns Peter, right? John gets to the empty tomb in the front of, what does he do? He's stopped. Why do some people stop when they get to the empty tomb? Because they really don't want to go in. They, they really don't want to go in. But as soon as Peter goes in, John goes in. Yeah, you know, once somebody has given them actionable feedback, he see how it's done, therefore he goes in. But then when you go into the Holy of Holies, what do you see? What is that you see? Going into this tomb from the scriptures, what do you see? Anybody, what, what do you see? Talk to me. You see the, uh, oh, you see the, um, the cloth folded and the headscarf also folded too. All the clothes are not folded. Okay. Uh, only the head, only the headgear folded. Okay. Yeah. But it was all it was folded, not lying with the other one. It was by itself. Here's the deal, what I'm saying. I, I know what the scriptures say, but what do you see? What do you see? What what do you see? It to me it was that Jesus was there. God raised him and everything that he had on was still in that tomb. But it wasn't like a rush, like just thrown any kind of way. It was in place. Describe the situation if you are just now becoming. Here's what I'm saying. When you walk in the tomb and you're saying, he's not in here. He's not. Amen. Empty. And, 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 and what I'm saying, people don't have a discerning heart to say, he's not in here. There's no way that he just got up and walked out of here. Mm -hmm. And nobody saw him. You're right. So then somebody just understood where we're going. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't understand where the church is going. They don't understand where Jesus is going. They don't understand where you're going. They just don't. And the best thing to do is to talk about you and put you down. Peter makes a great discovery, Mary and John. Now, what they, what they, were, what they thought they see, they didn't see. But what they thought they should see, they should have seen. And so many people miss it, Geraldine, because they don't want to look inside the empty tomb and investigate and find out what's really going on. They want to be judges and put other people down. None of these guys judged each other. Nobody did. Let me let uh, Keisha go to him. I'm, I'm going to someone about the empty tomb. Go ahead. Yes, sir. So I, I wanted to answer the question you said if we to put ourselves in the story, when we come to the empty tomb, what do we see? And just putting myself in the story, I would see that hope is, is gone. You know, Jesus, our Lord, is not here. And to me, is hope. Hope is, is not, is lost. All right, go ahead, Ms. Flynn. I just had a, a question or observation because Mary Magdalene only, all she saw, all the scriptures say she saw was the stone rolled away. That didn't is correct. say she went in. That's she correct. saw that and she ran. I would have thought if I didn't know down the line, or maybe she did, did she, uh, did she think he was raised when, 
Because it just doesn't show she went in and saw what they saw. No, Clem, according to verse 15, yeah, it's further down. she thinks they stole his body. Right. She thinks some grave robbers got it. Okay. They didn't rob his grave. But here's what I'm saying. This is why the church, I can't find true teachers in the church or people who understand the Bible, because they, don't go, they haven't been to the empty tomb. Here, here's the deal. Mary didn't go in, but she knew something's not right. People don't have enough discernment to say something not right and then go and get godly counsel. All right. Find out what the problem is. So she goes to the top two, and they come running. Mm -hmm. John comes, but for some odd reason, he doesn't, the scriptures don't say, he doesn't go in. He got there first, but he doesn't go in. Mm -hmm. Peter not only comes, he goes he in. He goes in. What does he see when it when you go to the empty tomb, what do you see? When, when I go in, I see that the Lord's body was right there, and it was wrapped up. It wasn't just a sheet on top of him, but it was wrapped up. Remember, they had to embalm him, and that's how he did. But the, 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 it looks like by the wrapping, he st how did he get out of that thing? Mm -hmm. So now you're looking at a, 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 the clothes being wrapped up, People don't really want to go deep inside the tomb. They want to stay outside and talk about what's going on in the tomb. When you go in the tomb, what do you see? You see the master is not there, but then you think about it. He did tell me he was going to leave. People don't understand the scriptures because they go to church. They be on the right committees, but they do not go inside the empty tomb. And I, my fear, Vivian, is so many folks think they're saved. I, this is just my opinion. And they, really, they, they go to church, they're good people, but they don't obey the way the scripture says. They don't go into the empty tomb. The empty tomb is, a, is part of the, one of the biggest part of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is proof that he's is, not there, yes, and I'm not going to be there, and you're not going to be there either. The last thing I'll say before you go, Terrence, is this. We got three people made three great discoveries. When you realize that Jesus died and he rose again for you, what does that cause you to do? When you realize that, that he's not there, there are too many witnesses that he, he, he's not there. When you realize he's not there, what do you do? Or what have you done? Besides been on a program at church. Mm -hmm. Do you go and tell somebody else? Do you live it? Do you go? Where, where does it happen? Go ahead, Terrence. Yes, sir. I, I had a question. Um, when John stopped before, um, you know, not going into the tomb, was it because he was viewing the situation, like, physically in a worldly sense and not a spiritual The sense? scriptures don't say. say. That's why I asked you, what do you, you see? see? Because John wanted to know, but he didn't want to know as, as much as Peter wanted to know. Mm -hmm. Peter went inside. Why does the Christian church want to stand outside mm -hmm. and look and not go on the inside and find out what's really going on? You all right? Yeah. See the question mark. Go ahead. He saw and then believed. Did it come back that the Lord said that I must go? Did it come back to him like us sometimes when we go through stuff? And the Lord says, trouble you, you're going through, but I'm with you. Lean and depend on me. Did it come back to John what Jesus had said to them while he was with them? Again, the scriptures don't say. Don't. The scriptures don't, they don't say what happened. But here, here's my point. Let me close out with this, Ron. Mm -hmm. We don't see people by who they are. We see them by who we are. Peter had a lot of faith. And John had some faith. But Peter, and a lot of people go to church, do a lot of stuff. But they don't have faith, especially when the rubber meets the road. They will run and talk about somebody and put them down and put their tail between their legs. But they, because you don't have time to talk about, well, why John didn't go in? Or where Mary at? Because Mary's going to eventually make her way in there. She, she, will, she will eventually make her way in there. But if you concentrate more on you 
and how your eyes see and what does your eyes see? Why does God not give you a revelation? Mm -hmm. Why is the handkerchief folded? Mm -hmm. Well, I think God's living, he's leaving proof and evidence in everybody's life yes. to say, look, not only am I not in there, that thing y'all had on my face, I done folded up, I done got out of there and I done laid over here on the side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. What? Some people can see it, baby, and some people, they, re they really can't see it. They, they just mm -hmm. cannot see it. Let me tell you why, Jerry. Because they don't want to go in the tomb and investigate. If you go in, you have to examine yourself and say, what the they didn't understand, they knew the scripture, but they didn't understand it. So they went in the tomb. My point is this, people don't understand what we're doing. They can talk on the surface with it. They can stand on the outside looking with it. But until you go in, you need to ask yourself what's really going on with you. Now, again, the chart, and I've been charged with micromanagement since I've been a pastor. I, going to school, you know, Joy, I know what the words mean, and I know they don't know what they're talking about, but I don't say anything. I don't, because I know they're coming from a worldly, not knowing perspective. But ask them a feedback mean we need to talk real time. Jesus taught them real time. He's going to give them actual feedback in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He will. He will. But because people have this misconception spiritually about what's going on, the, 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 the fight is not personal. It is all spiritual. We, the church has got to get to a place where we understand what the scriptures say. They didn't understand, so they went inside. Amen. And that's a method, message to the method here. That, that there's a method to the madness. You got to go inside or you don't get it. You still love people and you deal with them. But you can't do it because they're not where you are spiritually. You still love them. They can talk a good talk, but you go by the proof of what you see in their lives. What do they do? Go ahead, Desiree. Yes, sir. No, just going back to that question, and thank you for getting, uh, giving a better understanding. Um, but just put myself in Mary's shoes and knowing that she came to anoint Christ and to spend time with him is how I see it. She went to, to see him and to be with him, but then she gets there and he's not there. And the grief was just so overwhelming because I love I loved Jesus so much that I thought I had one more time to spend with him. And I know we spoke about this um, last week about going to visit graves that's not because Christ, he's, he's with them. He's telling them he's coming back anyways. And to just have that better relationship with them. And when you said that we don't see people about who they are, but where we are. But because I'm looking, I'm seeking, and I'm mourning, um, I don't take that next step to go see what's in the tomb. Peter does not put John down because John don't come in. No, no, here's what I'm saying. So many people cut other folks down for no earth. They don't, you don't understand John's relationship with Jesus and why he stopped where he did. You don't understand Mary's relationship with him, why she had more faith than any of them, and she came to do what she did. You, so that's why Christ let, let it be known to her first who he was. I think the church is so judgmental towards other people. We kill ourselves on the inside. I mean, just crush folk. Just crush. You don't know what they've been through. You don't know where they came from. You don't know how hard it was for them to get where they are. But people were just, they don't ask the right. They will just crush you. This in the church. Mm -hmm. This is in the church. So when you understand why Christ reveals himself to some people and why he don't to other folk. Pastor, I have to confess that when I got down to verse 10, I became one of those people. I'm saying, he went home. And there I am being judgmental because when it said, then the disciples went away again to their own home, I, that just felt like a letdown to me after they'd been in the tomb and they saw this and what happened. And so that's, I, I just hear what you're saying about how we will come to these judgments and conclusions without the whole information. And that's just really 
what I saw there. I just kind of had a little, I felt some kind of way about those two guys because they went home. Mm -hmm. well, well, Ron, let me say this. I, I, my personal opinion, I got on here somewhere, but my personal opinion, I think this guy's got to process this thing. Now, it's happening in real time with them. I think they got to process it. And they, they will eventually process this thing because it doesn't make any sense in the natural. And then you just got a revelation from God. And God says, even in your families, people die off or cast out without restraint because nobody got a revelation for their family. Nobody's got a plan for their own family. How are you going to teach somebody else something and you don't even have a plan for your family? How are you going to pray for somebody else and you want to pray for your own child, your own husband, because pride got you held captive? How can the Christian church attack people in the church and not love them enough just to talk to them? Mm -hmm. Help me out. I, my point is this right here, Ron. Clem, they had to go to the separate because everybody's, let me go, let me go think of this thing. Let me go. I don't know what happened. I know something happened. I need mm -hmm. to piece this together. And they're going to piece it together. And the empty tomb, this, the, the way I explain to people, Christ gave us proof and evidence that he was here, not only with all this stuff on the outside. People believe the seal, the cement, uh, the stone, they, the, all that. I mean, tons of stone. Now, they just put him in. Mm -hmm. They just put him in. He dies on the cross that Friday, and he goes, they put him in an unknown tomb that Friday night, which is Saturday morning. He's in that Friday night, Saturday morning, and Sunday morning, you got guards out here, no, no telling how many, uh, he, all these guards out here. What happened? In order to know, you got to go inside the empty tomb. The church don't want to go in there. Mm-hmm. Healing is in there. Life, resurrection mm -hmm. is in there. And you don't, people don't want to go in there and just, just see what's really real. I, what I found, people in the Christian church get a little knowledge, and it puffs them up some wicked. But they don't want to go deeper inside the tomb. Go ahead, Miss Jean. You know, it's like direction is in there because we just lost him. He just died. Now we've lost him again. I think at that time, because like us, in the natural, when we go through trauma or something at the beginning, it takes a little bit for us to come back to reality. Because right now, I'm kind of shocked, uh, unbelief. And then step back, get yourself together, and it starts coming back. Well, see, here's the deal. The body where they laid it is right there. The, the, the wrap where they laid his body is right there. And it's still like a body's inside of it. And then not only is he not inside the wrap, the thing that handkerchief is on his face, it's over to the side and it's folded up. How much proof does Jesus need to give you in your life that he's real and that the resurrection is real? And let me tell you why people can't, don't, know how to be born again. No, well, they're not born again because they, they don't believe in the resurrection because they never died to themselves. So when you don't die to yourself, you don't lead a resurrected, regenerated life. Mm -hmm. Because you went nice, nasty, or nasty, nasty to people the way you do. And, and you know, all these guys, are, they've been with Jesus for years, Ron. Mm -hmm. They've been with it for years. They don't know what to say. So before you say something that's going to blow your witness, Talk to the person. John and, now they will eventually talk, Ron. Mm -hmm. All of them are going to get together and talk. Yeah, they, they, and I'm not going to go there right now, but they're going to get together and talk. Because this, this is kind of baffling. But because people don't communicate in the church, they don't understand. They'd rather make a judgment call before they love you enough just to talk to you. Y'all still don't hear me, though. People would rather make a judgment call about you. My wife told me this morning, she said, well, you don't need to leave out here with them ashy legs. I said, I'll get my ashy leg right when I get to the church. And I still ain't got them right. 
<laughs> is that true? Fact. Actionable feedback. You don't need to leave out here with an action name. <laughs> I ignored it, Clem. That's how people do with the good news. They just, they hear it, but they just ignore it. I mean, you can teach it all day, Ryan, mm -hmm. but some folks just don't ignore it. Go ahead, brother. I just want to put a little bit more, shed a little bit more light. Uh, now, they knew that Jesus was in the tomb, and the tomb was sealed, and the tomb was guarded. And you just couldn't take, just roll the stone away. It took a whole bunch of people to be able to roll the stone away. And so I imagine when Peter and John got there, and J John got there before Peter, then maybe he, he was a little bit fearful for, for, for the first point that the stone had been rolled away. And, and I imagine Pastor, he didn't see no guards, no nothing. He, you know, this is my, my mind. In my mind, I'm saying to, maybe he thought this was a setup or something, you know. And then Peter went on in, and Peter observed. And then when he saw that everything was good with Peter, then he goes on in to see for himself. Now, it says that, and he believed. Now, the question is, did he, did he, did he believe in the resurrection or did he just believe in what Mary had said, that, some, that the tomb had been, Jesus, the body of Jesus had been taken from the tomb? Now, now the Peter and John goes on home, according to the scripture. Mary stands there on the outside. And it says what Mary uh, stood outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels. It's, it's just something about Mary. Mary just wasn't going to give up. Uh, you know, she, and, and by weeping is indicative to me about her. What she was so concerned. She was really so involved. And so I, I believe that she, she had a greater love for Christ. And, and it could be that, you know, because the men had been isolated and the women seemed to be moving around more freely. So, I, you know, that, that, that could have played into it as well. But by virtue of her standing there, and the, and the disciples had gone, she went in there and she saw these angels. And then she, uh, then she turned around and saw what she thought was a gardener. And, she, and her, what was her question? What have you, have, what have you done? Uh, 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 what it says, now when she had said, she said, and then she, they said to her woman, okay, when she saw the angels, they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now, when she had said this, she turned around, and then she saw Jesus in the, in the tomb, standing there, uh, and did not know that it was Jesus. I mean, she just probably still weeping and crying and concerned, and she not having the ability to recognize, like a whole lot of us, don't have it, like those two men on the road to the Emmaus Emmaus Road. The Emmaus Road. The Emmaus Road. Emmaus Road. And, okay, and then, uh, um, and did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be a gardener, said to him, sir, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me, she want to know, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Bam, Mary. You hear that? And Jesus said, Mary. And when he said Mary, her eyes opened up. Because nobody said Mary like Jesus. 
he said, Mary. And she turned and said to him, uh, Rabboni, or Rabbi, which is said, teacher. And Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren, go to the disciples, and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciple that she has seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Amen. Amen. Now, to me, that, that put a little bit more substance into it. Now, now she knows. She's seen him. She didn't see him the first time, but she saw him now. And she's going back to them disciples and tell them, not just tell them uh, what she had seen, but she told them what he had what he had said to her. And the other gospels identified to say that he said that to tell his disciples that he would meet them in Galilee. Now, having that information, where does that place me on you? Having been exposed to that information, and Pastor, you said it, uh, and it's not to take anything away from the crucifixion because the crucifixion is uh, the greatest act that Jesus did as a human on earth. But this resurrection says a whole lot about the gospel. Yeah. The resurrection says, hey, where everything I said is true. The resurrection is indicative of the fact that Jesus is the son of God. And he has brought salvation unto men to, to, to cleanse it by his blood. We have been clean, uh, saved from our sins. So, I mean, this is powerful. And so I imagine when she goes back to tell the disciples, maybe that might have given them a little bit more substance, in brought a little bit more clarity to them. Because, uh, let me tell you, it was dark days for them at that time. It was dark days. They were thinking about their lives still uh, in jeopardy as his disciples. They were thinking about their lives. But now this, this resurrection has brought a total different light to the subject. Yes. And now what kind of light does it bring to me and you? Yes, sir. Dude, let me give you some love right quick. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's why you do that thing together. Amen. That's just wisdom that brother talking about. Amen. That's how, it, let, me, let me say this. Now remember John... Outside, Peter inside. John goes inside, Peter. They both come outside, and clearly they went home. Mm -hmm. where, is she, where is she at? Mm -hmm. She's still there. She's still there. I don't know she's still there. Mm -hmm. You can count, Jesus can count on her, because mm -hmm. she's still there. Yeah. And then she go in, and God's got a surprise for her. Mm -hmm. Amen. Got two angels to speak to her. Mm -hmm. Angels didn't talk to John and Peter. Mm -hmm. They talked to her. Listen, I'm just trying to tell you, when you go into the empty tomb, God will speak to you. Mm -hmm. He ain't speaking to so many people because they will, they will not go in. And you try and talk to them and tell them, and it's like the Lord says, stop talking to them. You're trying to tell them something spiritual, and they're so carnal that they cannot understand what you're saying. Amen. They don't get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just don't get it. And then he said, Macmillan, leave them alone. I done showed you what, you, what I revealed to you. What I, what I showed you, now right. you leave it alone. Amen. Yes, sir. So when I'm looking at the board, it says Peter, John, and Mary. And I'm looking at how Peter, how I'm running, John beats Peter there. But he stops. Peter goes all the way in. So in my mind, I say, I want to be like Peter. I want to go all the way in. But then... I see Mary, and like you just said, Peter and John, they leave, but Mary stays. She's all in. She, she's seeking answers, and I'm not going to leave until I know where is my Jesus. So my heart goes at, towards Mary. I want to be more like Mary, to stay there and not move because of confusion or not move because I'm trying to figure it out. 
myself, but to just stay planted where Jesus is. She know this is this is where Jesus is supposed to be because we you just put him here. So I'm gonna stay placed there seeking answers. Mm. And he reveals her himself to her. And I think it's to me it's just it's just beautiful. Again, she stays, he calls out her name and she instantly knows this is my savior. Listen, I want y'all to learn something tonight because I promise you, I'll teach you if you learn. Mary stays outside. And now they call, she goes to, goes, who do, what do they call those two guys? Jesus, Peter, and John? They call them, what's the name they call them? Disciples. She's more a disciple than they are. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not about what you say, it's about what you do. Mm -hmm. She going in and then, see now, because God did not allow the angels, when, when Hebrews 12 talks about, Hebrews 13 talks about entertaining strangers, unaware as angels. Mm -hmm. She entertained two angels, and she talked. So what, what's going on? She talked to them. The angels didn't talk to her. Mm -hmm. I mean, the angels, the, the angels didn't talk to Peter and John. They talked to her. But here's the, the, the classic move. The, the, uh, she's talking to them inside of here. Jesus comes to the door. The, the S-O-N is shining, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she turned around. So maybe you can tell me, Mr. Gardner, mm -hmm. where is my master? Mm -hmm. Right? Tell me where he is. Because I need to go get him. All right. I'm going to go get him. Whatever y'all did with him, mm -hmm. I'm going to go get him. Mm -hmm. Actually, more feedback. She didn't just say, I'm going home. She said, I need to do something about Amen. this here. Mm -hmm. And she did something. The, the people have watered down the word so much. Yeah, that they don't get it that you cannot read this about the empty tomb. And Ron is spot on right mm -hmm. about the, the resurrection. That's when you get the resurrection power. When, when God has done something for you, he'll get his angels to speak with you. Mm -hmm. He'll take you to places that he'll show you something he ain't ready to show too many other people. He only showed the two people. And the third person, he showed more than he showed anybody. All right. Be that third person. Go ahead, ma'am. I think you kind of I think you kind of answered it because looking in the margin, it says, I think it's constancy. And when you turn to the back, it says friendship. So they were disciples, but with her, it was a friendship. Am I correct? Or yes. So when you truly have that intimate relationship and a friendship with Jesus, he will reveal himself to you and really speak to you. Correct? Yes, ma'am. He'll reveal a whole... I, I didn't ask for the, 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 the gift of dream interpretation, but I got it. It's like I can see it. When people get going, oh, yeah. and, and I don't have it, but how much does God trust you? He must have trusted Mary a whole lot. Mary had been delivered from a whole lot, and he gave her a lot. Mm -hmm. We should have a book of Mary. I'm saying, Jesus, why didn't you let Mary write a book? <laughs> Mary had a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. She had a lot of knowledge, but we didn't get one from her. And that's God's call. But we get to talk to him about all this for those who are going to heaven one of these days. The last thing I'm going to say is this right here about this particular, what Yamika just said. You know, Yamika, when you're friends with God, he's friends with you. And when you go and talk and you give your testimony about who God is and what he is, you don't have, you don't have any reservations. He don't call everybody friend. Everybody call him friend. Right. But he don't call you friend. All right. That's when it's Matthew 7 says, why do you call me Lord, Lord? You don't do what I tell you to do. People won't try to tell their true testimony about what God did for them. See, we know Mary's story. We know all this, but nobody knows your story mm -hmm. because you, you're too sh ashamed, too prideful to go into the Holy of Holies. And let it... You know, it makes you think also that when you always say we need to stop looking at things with our physical eyes and look with them with our spiritual eyes, and it's all about the heart because Jesus knew Mary's heart, and her heart was she kept saying, where, I, where is he laying? Where did you lay him? Where did you lay him? I need to go. I need to go. And at that time, I think like us, just like the men on the road to Damascus, they didn't recognize the mayors. They didn't recognize him mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. Mary recognized when he called her name. It's like I recognize that voice. Like you were saying, he has this unique voice. Can't be anybody else. Amen. It's only him. 
like us, I might not recognize physically sometime where Pastor is, mm-hmm. but I recognize that voice. All right. And, and it's the same way when Jesus speaks to us in this small, still voice. Mm-hmm. Do we recognize it, or does he have to yell at us for us to get it? Mm-hmm. But, but Jerry, let me, again, let me tell you, here's the deal. When Jerry, when he, when he talked to her, it was the way he talked to her mm-hmm. that she got it that, yeah, yes. that's, that's him. Yes, sir. That's him right now. She got it then. He didn't, he didn't say, Mary. And in today's idea of the red, he said what, her translation is kind of Miriam How, in, in the Aramaic, mm-hmm. whatever he said. And Jesus desires to talk to everybody in this room. He does. But what are you willing to do for him? Mm-hmm. What, what are you really willing to do for the Lord Jesus? Everybody who calls God, the Lord Jesus, their friend, he knows it's not his friend. Everybody you call your friend, you better be careful and beware. When God shows you time and time again, you deal with the snake and you pull that snake in close to you and they bite you. You got everything you deserve because God has revealed to you. That you better, that's a snake. Don't, don't, he, he's not a pet. He's a snake. Mm-hmm. Jesus reveals something to both, to everybody. But to me, she got the greater end of the stick. Amen. She Amen. did. And you know, her heart was set on the fact, he, Jesus went up before he walked in. And she said, Mr. Garden, I, where you at? I need to go, I'll go get it. Mm-hmm. She didn't say me and my friends go get it. She said, I'll go get it. Mm-hmm. That's the heart of that loyal friend that Jesus knew was in Mary Magdalene. Had never had any doubts whatsoever about who she was and what she did. None whatsoever. Amen. And, you know, Pastor, I think we're challenged. I don't know if you had said something earlier to this effect, but we're we're challenged in this world in so many ways by the troubles, by the circumstances, by the adversity. And all too often, and, and now you got to understand that these things happen so that we can be strengthened and that, that we can grow in Christ. So when we get in the midst of these things, we have a tendency to focus on it more than we're thinking about Christ in us. And so the situation, the the circumstances overcome us because we're thinking about the circumstances rather than thinking about Christ and, and what he has revealed to us by his word. Think about to, an example to me. Would David is a good example to me. When David went up to the, the battlefield to see his brothers and uh, the, the soldiers, all, uh, all he heard from the Israelites was this about this giant. That's all they talked about. Oh, this man, he big, he tall. Oh, he, he, he could kill us all. A lot of da da da. And and that's all they said. But David, he had a different conversation. He he was talking about who is this person who would defile the living God? Our living God. See, he had more of a relationship with Christ, with God yes, sir. versus the the obstacle that's in our way. Amen? Just like them 12 spies who came back, you know, out there in the wilderness uh, to, give a, a, uh, uh, to give a survey or a report about what they saw in the promised land that God had already told them he gave, he's going to give it to them. And 12 of them came back and said, well, it's got everything he said, but it's there's giants in the land. And what you say, and, and we see we are like grasshoppers in their sight. And maybe, uh, and, and that's probably how Christian, how a whole lot of us see situations in our life, as though we are grasshoppers compared to our situation. But Joshua and Caleb said, hey, they had a different report. They said, yeah, it's all that and, and a little bit more. But with the Lord on our side, with the Lord on our side, we can't be nothing but victorious. 
And we have to have that same assurance to know that Jesus is with us, never to leave us nor forsake us, even in the midst of our storms. He's ready to part waters for us. He's ready to build a bridge over troubled waters. He's ready to do whatever needs to be done in your situation. All you got to do is give him your attention. Don't worry about the, you know, those things before us. Because greater is he in us than he that's in the world. You know, Ron, I'm going to say this with, with, with what you're saying about, um, I, I totally agree with everything you're saying. But David, when they, 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 this, this nine foot, big old bad breath Goliath out here talking, that talk, David told his testimony. All right. He said, look, I done fought a lion and a bear. Mm -hmm. this, this guy, I mean, I got this. The Lord's got this. But because you don't give your testimony, I mean, about what God really did for you, in the lesson, Mary Magdalene got delivered by, about a lot of demons. She represented the church more than anybody around. Mm. Yeah, because she got, but she knew it. But she was a friend of God. How many people go to church, do good in church, but they're not really God's friend? They don't do what he tells them to do. The, the stuff that I hear, and I know a lot of stuff, Miss Clem, and I don't say anything about it, but I know it, and it, it some of it bothers my heart, but I, God showed me who I'm working with and what I'm dealing with. I knew it, but I didn't know it till he revealed it, and that's not to chastise or put anybody else down. God's going to show you something, believers, and you need to do it. Now, I know as a pastor, most folks don't know how to do a lot of stuff to come to church because it's antithetical what you do in the world. All right. Are you hearing me? But they want to tell me, and I know what I'm doing. I know God called me, and all I did was give you an assignment. Oh, you micromanaging us, micromanaging. You really need to know how foolish you sound. If you ever read the word, you understand it's a big difference between the two. Now, I knew that before I was a Christian. But actually, more feedback, I knew that before micromanagement. But that's their way of saying, I want to do what I want to do and how I want to do it. Now, the buck stops here with the pastor, and you ain't going to do it your way. Didn't you just tell him something? You can't have it your way. You can't have it your way? Yeah. Amen. That's what we're going with this thing with Jesus. Is Peter believing now? Yeah. Is he? Yeah. He's a believer. After the resurrection, he's in. Mm -hmm. He's in. That's when people believe after the resurrection. After the resurrection. Yeah. After, after the resurrection, I don't care who they are, I don't care what they say. Folk go to church 30, 40 years, good people in church, but they don't have a friendship with the Lord Jesus. Amen. I am, um, I pulled some articles that, that gave reference to the resurrection. And it says, without the resurrection, Christ's ministry ends in defeat yes, sir. and disillusionment. Yes, sir. The aspect of Jesus' ministry deserves more attention than just on an Easter Sunday. The resurrection culminates the passion narrative in all four of the Gospels yes, sir. because it is at the center of redemption itself. Paul bluntly stated that apart from the resurrection, our faith and message are in vain. We don't even have power in our witness, in our testimony. But by virtue of it, we ought to be, we ought to have power. We ought to be able to speak boldly uh, with persuasive power uh, to, to save men, women, and children uh, from, from this Worldly death, uh, the wages of death, wages of sin. I'm sorry. Pastor, you want to go? I was going to agree with you because I think people don't realize the statement you made about um, their witness. Mm -hmm. The resurrection has to start at the redemption. Because you don't realize, again, to a person, you ask people in the Christian church, what is redemption? What's the difference between redemption and salvation? How, why does redemption have to come first? Regeneration. Regeneration can't come after the resurrection. Mm -hmm. It's got to come then. But people, I mean, I just hope the church get it and quit being surface Christian and always being critical and criticizing and putting folks down. T 
talk to them sometime and minister to them Amen. and find out what's going on before you put that, the, the just, just find out before you, it, it's not what you think. It's not what you think. And you'll understand better by and by if you just do it God's way. Amen. Amen. Let me mention one more that I thought was powerful to me, Pastor. It says Jesus embodied, embodied and demonstrated the oxymoron of the crucified life. Yes, sir. That a self-centered life is misery and that genuinely abundant living occurs only when one dies to self-interest. So whereas a, the world thinks self-preservation, we believe that the more you give, the more you receive. The more you give of yourself, as a matter of fact, we say it when we, when, when we are up in front and we make our confession that we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord, that, that's saying that's an in, indicative of dying in ourselves and that we are raised up to live for Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all, all things, all things. Yeah. are new. Uh, it's, in the, it's in that resurrection that we can have, the, that we can throw away these bodies and, and bring on the newness in Christ Jesus. If we can see, all, I mean, all of that is in, is in the resurrection. It's in the resurrection, and it ought to be, it ought to be in us, and we ought there ought to not be any shadow of a doubt in us, uh, because if the, if if we waver, we 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 can't we can't speak, we can't witness. I mean, you got to be in this, or you got to be out of this. Isn't that right, Pastor? That's the way it goes. No, no gray line, no gray area. You you're either for him, or you're against him. Pastor, you had any closing I, I do. I want to say this right here. We have our leadership meeting this Saturday uh, from 9, not 9.30, 9 to 11. And hopefully we won't take up that whole time because we want to have a celebrate the, the ladies of the link. We want to have a great celebration for them. We still need a head count. It's Tuesday. We need to get everything together by Thursday. So if you would, is that sign-up sheet in the home? All right, Pam has a sign-up sheet. Please, please, please. We don't mind who's coming, or how, but I, we need to get the information to the guy and everybody else and just, you know, please sign up. If you know somebody missing, we, we're going by head count. All right? Amen. Uh, leadership, the description is up there, Luke chapter 5, 17 through 26. Amen. That's script. And let me tell you, last thing. Again, it's going to coincide with this Bible study. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we are so grateful for this evening, grateful for the opportunity to hear your word and, and to, to be further uh, in our understanding and our wisdom in terms of what you, uh, what you give us so that we'll be able to have not just life, but to have abundant life. I pray, Heavenly Father, that your words will continue to be in our hearts and minds, uh, that not only will we know what you're saying and doing, but we'll be a part of your ministry here on earth. For you said, if, if, if I be lifted, that you had the power to draw all men and women unto yes, you. Sir. Help us to be a part of this awesome ministry, especially in this season, Lord, where so many things are happening around us, and there's so, it is imperative that we, we stand up in every aspect of our lives to do your bidding. Thank you for these humble servants who have come this evening and those who are listening, uh, and thank you for the families for which they represent. Father, we pray that you will continue to be with us as we leave this place, uh, but never, never from our presence. Give us power to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. 
And the church said, Amen. 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 God